to testify on behalf of free speech in the UW system. Um, for the past two years, I have been a state chair with a national nonprofit that has a campaign dedicated to fighting for free speech on college campuses. In this capacity, I worked with both public and private universities across the state of Wisconsin to challenge unconstitutional campus speech policies with a specific focus on the UW system. This offered me an in-depth look at the experiences with free speech on campuses other than my own throughout the UW system. Unlike the testimonies delivered by other students today, my experiences on these campuses did not deal with contentious speakers, but rather giant inflatable beach balls. Um, one of our notorious activism events is rolling around free speech balls on campus. So there's these giant nine foot, like giant free speech balls. They're really fun. Sorry, I didn't bring one today. Um, but yeah, so one of our events is rolling these around and encouraging people to ride on it. This is to foster um, healthy debate as well as encouraging free speech. And uh, while rolling one of these speech balls around UW Oshkosh this past fall, we were stopped by police and a member of the campus administration who were called by a professor who thought that the messages on the ball were offensive. The police proceeded to ask the chapter president for his ID and check if he had any outstanding warrants. A student advocating for free speech was treated like a criminal. I reached out to the champion for free speech at UW Oshkosh, Jacob Nowak, for a, uh, an update on the campus climate. He was told by the, the assistant dean of students that the next time he does a free speech ball, he has to tell students to be respectful, effectively censoring student body and individual thought. And the chancellor refused to acknowledge the unconstitutional speech codes on campus, despite being contacted by the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education, a nonprofit that, as you know, specialize in, specializes in civil liberties in academia. Last year, I had the privilege of attending the Foundation for Individual Rights in Education Summer Conference, where we delved into the notions of free speech, what kind of speech is constitutional, and how to advocate for free speech and reclaim student rights on campus. They also walked us through their policy rating system, ranked as green, yellow, and red. Green light policies are constitutional and uphold the students' rights to free speech on a public campus. Yellow light policies tend to be vague or broad and need more narrowly tailored language in order to fully protect students' rights. And red light policies blatantly violate the students' rights, most often by having a free speech zone on campus. I recognize that free speech zones were brought up earlier by another student, and just to clarify, since it wasn't before, um, they are unconstitutional and they're technically, they're not supposed to be on campuses but they are. And we actually have one of these free speech zones on my campus, although we have a yellow light rating, yellow light rating from fire. The zone is out near the main entrance of the Union by the bell tower on a small hill surrounded by bushes and fenced off from the main walking paths. This was one of those outdated policies on the book that few knew about until last spring when a Democracy and Justice Studies senior seminar group was forcibly removed from the University Union where they were holding a demonstration raising awareness about sexual assault and told to go to the free speech zone. This situation highlights the necessity for clearer policies as the union staff were not sure how to respond to the situation and this also did a disservice to the students who had to go out of their way to engage with the group. As you all probably know, the UW Board of Regents adopted their own version of the University of Chicago principles of free speech in 2015 and reaffirmed them in 2016. These principles embody the First Amendment and notions of free expression and of free academia. So far, these have only been empty promises. Despite their legal and moral obligation to provide for the students, the Board of Regents has not enforced policy changes to be made at the university level. While the sentiment of the Chicago principles is important to embody, it is vital to push for change at the level that will directly affect the students. Representative Diane Hesselbein said, I believe strongly in free speech and I think we have it now. Respectfully, the reality is that we don't. Free speech should be a nonpartisan issue and I implore you all to support the UW system students by ensuring our constitutional right to free speech. I also encourage you all to visit, visit FIRE's website for an in-depth look at each university's unconstitutional policies. They currently only have um, a handful ranked, and if you can uh, look inside my testimony, there's actually a visual. You can see UW Oshkosh has a red light rating, the, currently the only one. Um, last year, UW Green Bay also was ranked red, and we have a handful of yellow light policy schools as well. Um, you can also send in a request form if you'd like additional universities to be rated. Um, and then to touch upon another uh, question somebody had asked about previous cases that FIRE has worked on. They have a successful track record of um, fighting universities, especially public universities, who do not, uh, do not uh, secure students' First Amendment right. And so they also have all those previous cases listed on their website if you'd like to view that. 
Um, I thank you all again for inviting us to speak with you today and ensuring that student voices are heard. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, Representative Kramer. Thank you, Mr. S Chair, and thank you for your uh, very good testimony, Jessica. It was really interesting. Um, I, it went, if it wasn't so serious, it'd actually be humorous. The uh, situations you're talking about on the UW campus there at Oshkosh, um, it seems like we're treating college adults like kindergartners, telling them to go to the, uh, the time out and go to the free speech zone. Um, it's unreal. Um, I guess I have two questions for you really quickly. Have you read the bill? Do you know what the bill does? I have, yes, okay. I've read it briefly. Do you have any, any concerns with it or do you think there's anything that could be improved on in there? Yes, um, my one main concern would be the punishment, the two strikes leading to, a, I believe it was, was it a suspension or expulsion? Um, I feel that that's a little bit too harsh. I understand the, uh, the reasoning behind it, but I do think that that's more than a slap on the wrist, I guess you could say. I feel like that's very intense to strip somebody's education away because they didn't understand what you know their First Amendment actually entailed. Right, that's what we're hoping to get to with the orientation and things of that nature. Mm -hmm. Have you seen, so I obviously talked about some of the policies Earlier, I picked on UW Oshkosh because of their red rating yeah. <laughs> and looked into some of their policies. Um, have you seen ever some of these bias-motivated incident reports? I mean, have you ever heard of them being used against people? I have heard of them. I personally um, don't know of anybody who's filed them or have read any, but I do know that, that the bias incident report team exists at, I believe, each UW campus. So. Yeah, because I know one of the, the concerns that came up even in an interview I just did and even and earlier today was... Um, the fact that do you think students are going to try to um, basically get other students in trouble because they'll be recording them at, at uh, events. Well, obviously that's going on right now with a bias motivated instant report saying I find someone's speech offensive, but thank you so much. You're welcome. Representative Balwig. Thank you, Mr. Chairman, and um, uh, thank you very much, Jessica, for, for coming today. I did want to, um, since the author is, is now here, I did want to repeat a question that I asked to uh, one of the, 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 the prior students, mm -hmm. and that had to do with, um, um, and I forget now which gentleman it was. Oh, it was um, um, Regent Higgins, who had a different model for, the, um, for that um, board, and I suggested to uh, one of the prior students that wouldn't it be good to have some students also represented on that board who are actually affected by the policy? Do you have any comments about, about that part of the bill? Yeah, I completely agree that there should be some form of student representation, um, solely because we are the ones on the ground. We are seeing it, you know, first. And um, I think it'd be a good perspective to bring to the committee. Thank you, Jessica. Yeah. That's our last question. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you so much. A few. Uh, our next speaker is Jordan Madelson. Madeline? Madeline? 